This is the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Boeing's first new model in almost 15 years is a mid-sized jet. And unlike standard aircraft, the 787's major structural elements are made from layers of super strong and super expensive carbon fibre. The end result is a fuel-saving aircraft that could connect distant cities more efficiently and create new long-haul routes. And of course the state-of-the-art technology isn't confined to this aircraft's exterior. Little expense has been spared on the inside as well. Let's go inside and take a look. The 787's interior is certainly sleek. Features on board such as dynamic lighting, spacious overhead luggage lockers and electronic window shades with adjustable transparency enhance the aircraft's functional and futuristic look. Boeing also claims better internal pressurisation and humidity levels will result in a more comfortable flight and fewer dry mouths. Now a fantastic flying experience depends mainly on uh, the level of comfort for the passenger and for me being six foot three that's all about the, the leg room and as you can see in this basic economy configuration uh, it's not actually that bad uh, but of course airlines will be able to reduce this so uh, one thing I would say is don't expect to see beds in cattle class anytime soon. Boeing is taking a different route to its main rival Airbus. Instead of investing in a super jumbo jet to rival the A380, Boeing reckons a more economical aircraft capable of flying longer distances and opening up new destinations will attract a bigger number of buyers. And the proof could be in the pudding. Boeing claims the 787 is the fastest selling model it has ever produced. Airlines are very excited about the 787 and it's reflected in a very substantial uh, pre-service entry orders for one simple reason, efficiency and fuel economy. Given we've seen the, the, the fuel spikes of two years ago and the upward trend, even though the, the price level overall fell back, fuel economy is always going to be a key focus. Add to that the question of environmental credentials, that's a very positive thing. But like most new aircraft in development, the 787 has been beset with problems. Costly production hiccups have caused delays of more than two years, while new flight test holdups could push back deliveries even further. Part of the reason is that it was doing a very technically advanced plane, uh, so it's very new materials. Uh, in addition to that, they decided to change the way they actually built it uh, to lower the risk so that they actually put a lot of work that they would have normally done in-house out to their supplier base and uh, that didn't always work very well. But I have to say that if you talk to a customer of a 787, I've talked to quite a few airlines over the last week or so, uh, if you ask them, uh, well, where are you actually going to fly it to, because supposedly it opens up all of these new routes, they'll say, well, you know, we really need to see that it is going to fulfill all the promises that Boeing's made for it. Is it actually going to be as light as it says, therefore we'll be able to fly to all these routes? And uh, so far they're saying, well, we need to see, to make sure that it actually does what it says on the tin. And I think people do need to bear that in mind. There's no doubt that the Boeing 787 has a smaller footprint than the Airbus A380. Boeing hopes that while fuel prices remain high, buyers will be more attracted to the Dreamliner than to the Airbus Super Jumbo. But this aircraft is two years delayed, and skeptics will point to the fact that new jets don't always live up to promised claims. Daniel Garraham for the Financial Times at the Farnborough Air Show.